Uh, uh, Reggie here says, uh, Terry, United played well, but is this a style of play you expected from Ten Hag? Sit back and counter. See, again, I didn't think we did sit back and counter in the first half. We had the possession. And this is where sometimes I get people get angry and I get people view things differently. But Arsenal in that first half were so regimented in their shape, it was hard for us to break it down. Now, I think with, over the course of time, better players coming into our team, it would help. I know you said this to me, KJ. You throw, you throw Hoyland in from the start, it's different. Martial's got no physical attributes left in football. None. The, None. The, and the, the fall of Martial needs to be flipping studies. This guy, I was saying it to, to my best mate, Dre, he was here, saying it to my dad. I got a voice note after saying it to those people. And Dre, uh, Terry saying the same thing. The guy is useless. And it hurts me to say it because I, I was a big Martial fan and I, I would love him to rekindle his form. But the guy is useless. He's on the pitch to fill a gap. He's on the pitch to make up numbers. He, he His touch is gone. He's got no strength. He, he can't run anymore. He's shooting. He can't finish chances anymore. And his dribbling has disappeared. So all the things that were made him great is gone. The only thing he's got left is little like passes around the corner, little link-up plays here and there. But that's inconsistent as well. Hoyland, from the moment he came on, you saw he wanted to fight. He was backing up onto uh, to Gabriel, backing up onto Saliba, making himself just a hassle, using his speed to get in behind to create chances for himself or try and create something for happened for the team. We looked so much better. The link-up play that he had as soon as he came on was so much better than what we had with Martial. He's actually trying to def- he's actually trying to battle the defenders. It, I, I hate I hate saying it, but the man's finished. The mm. man the Didn't... man is finished, and I don't know who's gonna sign him. I don't know where he needs to go, but unfortunately, it's not. He can't be at Man United no more. He he can't be here because he can't revive himself. It is done. It's finished, man. And I'm do, sad. Do you, about know, it. do you not know, yeah. you know, think with Hoyland coming in and him becoming a rotation player could be the way he gets back onto form because he can just go away, go train, go work on himself, and he doesn't. He's not the one relied on. He, he, he might. Do you know what he's seven twenty eight? How yeah. much do you know what does one need you know to get to souls? revive himself, man? So. So, do you know what it is, right? I, I'm older, right? I've put a bit of weight on this year. I've not been going to gym and stuff. I'm 37, 38 years old. My body just won't do things that it used to. Like, I go, I, when I go back to the gym, it's going to really hurt. When I stopped fighting, again, I was only in my mid-20s. I had some bad injuries, but my, my knees were gone. I just couldn't do things anymore. When I watch Marshall, he reminds me of a lot of the old guys. And say old guys, they are old for fighters, young in real life whose bodies just let them down. People that have just had... you He's had so many injuries, so many muscular issues. Your body goes. It just goes. It's why I've said about Reese James at Chelsea. If he does that hamstring at least another time once bad, his body's going to stop. It, Fernando Torres was identical. He was fine, kept on getting over his injuries, and then there was one done. Michael Owen, another. And I just think Martial has so many injuries now. He's gone, and you just saw a difference. And... Rivals hate this because they call it an excuse. We have spent money, but this Man United team still needs another four, four hundred, at minimum, another four or five hundred million pounds being spent on it because there are just lots of players that are not good enough. And I just sort of look at this and so look, he spent some money on players that haven't quite delivered yet. I, but I disagree. I think you need to be smarter with how you no, spend your money. I, I get what you're saying, but if we if you think about the fact that a decent midfielder now costs fifty million, you're spending four or five hundred million to, to for this, what, and, and the thing is. I'm not saying that all these signings have been great, but that doesn't mean you just stop him from buying people because by that same, like by that logic, Klopp shouldn't be able to buy another midfielder because he bought Pacer at 60 million and he flopped. It doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. I've seen uh, I'd t- out people sort of act like, well, he bought these three players that weren't very good, so why should we let him spend anymore? So, so you don't let him fix the problems and you continue being bad because there's holes. It's, it's weird logic. So even if Anthony doesn't turn improve this year, he should be allowed to bring somebody else in to, to, to better him because not every signing is going to make it. But today demonstrate, especially our bench. But look, when Amrabat's there and Hoyland's playing, maybe there'll be some improvements. But uh, some other news, Lissandro Martinez has left uh, and he's currently on the way to his airport to fly to Argentina. No protective boot or crutches. Um, he's taken off precautionary and he uh, looks like he's okay, uh, which is good news for me. Uh, Terry, give KJ a rise. Man looks depressed. Uh, so. One day, maybe. Uh, some of us Arsenal fans never learn not to write off players too fast in their first season. Fans wrote off White, then Fabio, and now it's Havertz. Jason, I want to ask you, I mean, White's playing well, has been for a while. Fabio looks good. Should Declan, should 
Kai Havertz be written off already? Yeah, it should be written off. He's been shipped for Chelsea for three years. What makes me think he's going to be uh, any good for Arsenal in the, uh, this season itself? We saw the last four, first four games. He wasn't, he wasn't doing it. Like he was useless. Like I, I don't know what he provides to, to the pitch. I, I, I don't get it. Even today, he was a, he was a cause of the first goal itself. So I, I really don't understand why we signed Kai Havertz in that number eight. He's not a number eight. He's a, he's out. He's either a number ten or even a striker. Like I don't even know what his best position is. Like I'm, I'm frankly being harsh, but honestly, I really don't know what we're smoking out there because. When he's out, when he when when he's out of the team, I feel like we're we're so much better with Fabio Vieira coming into the side. And as much as I slated, like in the same sentence, you say I slated Fabio Vieira the first season because he was a bit too weak. But I always felt that there was a player in him. There's a lot of like, there's a little bit of magic in there. We saw there's quite a few performances last season that Fabio Vieira has it a little bit in him, but. Yeah, I feel like we should start Fabio Vera itself. But I hear I've just read the maddest quote from Arteta. I want to read this out to you. It's out of context, but out of context, it reads yeah, mad. I've seen as well. Talking about Kai Havertz, Fabrizio put this out. Arteta, yeah. This is what Arteta says verbatim. I said to Kai Havertz, uh, things are hard at the, at the beginning. When I met when I met my wife at the beginning, it was hard to conquer her. It was hard. I had to try and message her and go and go. And in the end, she says, yes, uh, we can be together. It's beautiful. <laughs> I, listen, your manager makes me die. He's to conquer. Yeah, I don't know like, what he's, he's smoking at here, man. He's, he's, he's way, right, a lot of people laughed right. about his analogy the other day about the driving to work. And I, the way... Gao and Lee explain it. It's like he's saying, weird. I, I went and listened to it after the show, and I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Like for yes. me personally, I was like, I didn't understand that we, what was he's basically saying there's more than one way to skin a cat, yeah. and he's right. Do you know what I mean? He just I, again, I don't want to I don't want to keep praising, but I, some of the criticism I see, I feel is so forced, it's unbelievable. Uh Terry, I see what you did uh, by making the Man United fans take up all the time to talk first. Jay-Z tried the same thing against Naz and still got Ethan. 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 Okay. Um, I don't know about that beef. I don't know. Uh Jay-Z. Uh he's the man. I don't care he's right or wrong. He's winning because we're married. Uh, Bruno is a decent player, but it boggles my mind how he can be captain of Man United. Think of all the captains you lot had in your history. No one does the human-sized rat compared to them. Uh, don't have leaders. Listen, I, I, listen. I, I don't know. If, look, I didn't think Bruno was good today. I didn't think he was good at all. But then I've, I've had people DMing me since I said that he created all of our chance. He created four of our chances. In fairness, he was. It, some people are sending me clips in the three or four chances in the second half. He was the guy that won the ball and then. Broke the lines with the passes and set those tacks away. But I suppose, like again, it's it's. I didn't yeah, see. There wasn't even a lack of leadership. It wasn't the, the issue. Wasn't leadership because for the most of the game we we were there. It was that like, just at that last moment it was focused yeah. around in the corner. So yeah, yeah. Uh, United need a leader uh, to uh, to look at Rice uh, when you say when he says calm down after all the celebrations. If Bruno stops crying and starts to act like a leader, this team will be much better. Thank you, Paul, in for that super chat. Uh, without Rashford, United are 11th. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, I didn't quite get the Rashford stuff today. I know there was that counter attack where he could have played the ball earlier, but again, I just saw it as Rasmus overrun and then the passing lane was pulled off. I didn't think outside of that he did much else wrong, but I thought Rashford maybe... had Ben White on skates today. Ben White was horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You he didn't get enough has... opportunities to run at him, but. He when he, he does, did, yeah, man, skates. Yeah, ben White, he does. Ben he has White, got his number, kind of like Saka and Shaw. Yeah, yeah. I, I look at it, this is what tends to happen with with Rashford. He could do because he, I thought he defended well. He tracked back. He obviously scored a goal. He created a couple of decent opportunities for us. I thought he was a threat. He only has to do one thing wrong when we have an opportunity to score, and for certain people that don't like him, that's the game. That's everything. That that mistake is everything about him as an example. Onana did what he did for us today. And then and then for some people, it's like that one mistake. It's like, I'm going to undo everything else and go, that's the reason why I didn't want him. Agendas. And by the way, I'm not saying that's, that's you, Sunshine. I don't think that's what you did. Um, I just think you, I know what you're doing. You're just defending the, the way people went over the top with the hair and didn't respect him. And I, I totally get that. 